This is Mary Dubler, and this is another in our series on plants, trees, and flowers of the Bible. Today we learn about lentils, the world's oldest cultivated legume. The lentil plant, scientific name Lens culinaris, grows to a height of about 16 inches, and its flowers are small and white to purple in color. After pollination, pods form that usually contain two edible lens-shaped seeds. There are four main categories of lentils, brown, green, red, yellow, and specialty. Specialty lentils include one called black beluga that is about one-third the size of a brown or green lentil. There are dozens of varieties of lentils harvested around the world. Lentils were first cultivated in the Fertile Crescent six to 10,000 years ago. The production of this crop then spread to North Africa, Europe, and other places. Today, Canada and India are the largest growers of lentils. Lentils are a good source of protein, fiber, iron, and other nutrients, and they are used in a variety of recipes including soups, stews, curries, and even breads. Approximately half the world's lentils are consumed in India, around 3 million metric tons per year. The book of 2 Samuel chapter 23 talks about a battle that took place in a field full of lentils. The use of this legume for food is mentioned in Ezekiel chapter 4 and 2 Samuel chapter 17, as well as in Genesis chapter 25, which is perhaps the most well-known reference to lentils. Genesis 25, starting at verse 19, recounts the struggles between two brothers, Esau and Jacob. Esau was the oldest and so was eligible for the birthright. A special honor accorded the oldest son that gave him the right to inheritance and carrying on the family name in this case, the line of Abraham. The birthright also came with the responsibility to care for the family once the father passed away. One day Esau came home from having hunted all day, and he was tired and hungry. His brother Jacob was preparing lentil stew and bread. Esau asked Jacob for some of the stew, and Jacob said, All right, but trade me your rights as the firstborn son. Esau replied, Look, I'm dying of starvation. What good is my birthright to me now? Esau made an oath to give his birthright to Jacob, ate the lentil stew and bread, and got up and left. The end of the chapter says, Esau showed contempt for his rights as the firstborn. Esau acted impulsively and without thinking of the consequences, and he put his temporary physical needs over his God-given blessing. He valued his birthright as less than a small bowl of lentil stew. Now we might scoff at Esau and think, how could he be so foolish to give his brother something so important and valuable? We can be just as impulsive and unthinking as Esau, giving into lust, anger, greed, etc., in essence selling precious blessings from God. Esau's example teaches us to hold fast to what is truly important even if it means denying the appetites of our flesh. If we do that, we will not have sorrow and regrets like Esau did. Do not lose heart if, like Esau, you have made a foolish choice. Because of what Jesus Christ did for you when he died on the cross and rose again, you can be forgiven and free of condemnation. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1 verse 9. This is Mary Dubler, and I hope you've enjoyed learning about lentils. Please watch others of our videos in this series on plants, trees, and flowers of the Bible.